Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach. I have been a professional family systems therapist for 33 years and in that span of time I spent a lot of time trying to understand human relationships. Uh, this video that I'm about to present is a summary of some thoughts that I've accumulated over many years about how to handle rejections. Most of us, probably including you, have experienced as a child and or an adult a rejection. Someone rejects you. Um, it's a complicated dynamic and a painful one. I want to offer you some ideas, some insight into rejections and some ideas about how to adapt to them and how to cause them if you have to. If you've ever experienced a rejection, let me ask you to keep it in mind as you listen and ponder what I'm about to say. The purpose of this video is to raise your awareness about rejections, why they happen, how they happen, and how to adapt to them, and how to cause them. To start, just reflect, would you agree that from infancy, all of us human critters crave social approval and acceptance. Initially, from the giant pink people, uh, mom and dad and other adults around us, we desperately need to feel that they see that we are worthy, excellent, wonderful little people. And we crave that from our earliest days. <clears throat> Across our lives, up until the present moment and onward, we form, quote, relationships, unquote, with other people in order to fill a complex set of needs, for instance, the need for companionship, uh, the need for stimulation, the need for love, the need for friendship. One of the needs continues from infancy to be we need to feel approved and accepted. And if we don't, we feel rejected. Um, most relationships, as you know, most relationships are a dynamic mix of satisfactions, pleasures, which means we get our local set of needs met well enough, often enough, and frustrations, which are periods of time or incidents or events where we don't get our relationship needs met well enough or at all. So all our relationships are a dynamic mix of satisfactions and frustrations. Notice the continuum that we all experience. Compare this to your own life. Any given relationship with a child or an adult can go from uh, annoyance, either satisfaction, steady state satisfaction, or annoyance, or dislike, or avoidance, or ultimately, if you can't fix the, the problems, whatever they may be, rejection. Rejection is at the end of a spectrum of relationship changes and reactions. Okay, it's sort of the uh, end point. What causes rejections? Try to answer that question out loud. If you want to, pause this video and try to re reflect. Answer out loud. Think about people you have rejected or those who have rejected you and think out loud, why did that happen? Here are some common surface reasons. They're not the real reasons. Most people answer the question casually and they say, well, um, I didn't like the person. I disapproved of them. I was afraid of this person. I didn't trust them. I didn't respect them. We didn't have anything in common. We were absolutely unable to communicate. Couldn't hear each other, couldn't problem solve. And ultimately, they or I ran out of hope that we could fix these problems. We had no hope. Those are common casual surface reasons for social rejection. I propose that the underlying causes most people are not aware of, okay? They are 
psychological wounds, one or both people inherited psychological wounds from their ancestors who were unaware of them. Unawareness is the second reason for rejections. We're not aware of our needs, we're not aware of the other person's needs, or we don't value them equally. And the third of three reasons is ignorance. When rejections occur, one or both people are ignorant of how to make effective, satisfying relationships, how to communicate well, how to adapt to and reduce psychological wounds. Those I propose, if you have been rejected or you rejected someone else, those are the real reasons. Um, the bad news is these are powerful and most people are unaware of them. The good news is once aware of these three core causes, you can improve each one. You can reduce the number of rejections in your life that you cause, and you can adapt better. How can you tell if you have adapted well to a rejection? Um, if you have some of these signs, you have not adapted well. Confusion. I don't understand. Why did this happen? Why is this person cutting me off? Or why, why do I need to keep away from this person? Confusion is one sign that you haven't adapted. Excessive guilt. I feel so bad about various things. I feel bad. A companion symptom is I feel ashamed. I'm embarrassed. I did some bad things that I really regret that contributed to the rejection and I feel bad. I'm a bad person. Shame. Resentment. I really resent the other person. How dare she or he cut me off and say that I'm no good or say they can't be friends with me or be companion with me or live with me or get along. How dare they? They're, they're the ones. They're the problem. It's their fault you find yourself blaming the other person and not looking at yourself. That is usually a sign you have not adapted, haven't begun to adapt to a, uh, a rejection. <clears throat> Are there some keys to adapting well? If, if someone rejects you, a child or an adult, a stranger, a partner, a co-worker, a lover, are there ways you can adapt best? I propose absolutely. Here are the key ways. There are a group, but these are the most important. The first is make sure your true self is guiding your daily life. If you don't know what that means, which most people don't, I invite you to get curious find out, is your true self running your life or is, quote, somebody else running your life? Study my Lesson 1 videos and the related articles in my nonprofit educational website called Break the Cycle. Break the Cycle of Inherited Wounds and Ignorance. See Lesson 1 to see if your true self is in charge and learn how to free your true self to guide you. That's the most powerful thing you can do. The second most powerful thing you can do, once you understand psychological wounds and how they're inherited and how they manifest and what they mean, study the person who is rejecting you and see if they are a grown, wounded child in denial. <clears throat> if that doesn't mean anything to you, you'll find the answers in lesson one. The third thing you can do is intentionally ponder and become aware what were your relationship needs, what needs were served by having a relationship with this person, and what needs did they have of you. Try and stand in their shoes, live in their skin, and see if you can identify why did they want a relationship with you. Then, as objectively as you can, perhaps with some um, well meant help, try and identify which of the other person's needs were not getting met well enough and why. 
This is not about blame. It's not about fault finding. It's about objectively saying, why won't, why won't my car move? Oh, I'm out of gas. That's just problem solving. It's observing factually what's wrong. Do the same thing with relationships. What needs were not getting met well enough? One of the needs probably was we weren't able to problem solve. Anyway, become aware of your needs and the other person's needs. Rank them equally. If you can't, a false self is running you. Rank them equally and try and understand as best you can what needs of the other person were not getting filled well enough. Okay. Another key to adapting well to a rejection, if you couldn't prevent it or renegotiate it, a key is to identify what am I losing or what have I lost because of this rejection? What things that I value and am attached to am I losing and I am no, are no longer going to be in my life? I've lost enjoyable conversations. I've lost mental stimulation. I've lost the chance to travel with an interesting, fun companion. I've lost the chance to know this person's family. I've lost uh, a degree of social security, feeling like I have support. This person is a, one of my supports. I've lost that now, or it's diminished. It's less, lesser. Identify specifically what you have lost because of the rejection, and then grieve your losses. My observation is, over many years, we who were raised in dysfunctional families and traumatic childhoods often don't know how to grieve in a healthy way. We weren't taught. We weren't shown. If this is true of you, I urge you, study lesson three in my videos and my website. It will give you a great deal of insight and tools and options for grieving life's inevitable losses. Well, see lesson one, two, and three. The final uh, recommendation I would make is get to know and get comfortable using the ageless wisdom in the serenity prayer. If you don't know what that means, it's brief and it's ex profound. The prayer, so to speak, or guidance or suggestion is, please grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Grant me the strength to change the things that I can. And grant me the wisdom to know the difference. That's the serenity prayer. It's applicable to all kinds of life problems, not just projections. But I find it very helpful for me, and many other people do too. So I encourage you to try out using that in the context of personal rejections. I want to note in closing, if you feel the need to reject somebody, you can do so effectively or ineffectively. There are a whole group of options you have in order to try and prevent rejection, and if you can't, to implement a rejection in ways that leave both people feeling clear, mutually heard, and mutually respected. I'm not going to try and summarize these options here. What I am going to do is say, if you want to learn more about this important universal topic of handling interpersonal rejections, see this article on my website. It's free. There are no ads at all. None. All I'm selling is information and awareness. Here's the link to that article. And here's another link, which is an outline of my seven lesson nonprofit website as a whole. Seven self-improvement lessons. I encourage you to study over time lessons one through four. Um, they will profit you in many ways. They're free. Um, I welcome any kind of feedback at all, uh, supportive or critical. 
about this video, about any other videos, about my website, um, I'd be glad to hear from you, either as a comment on YouTube here, or an email or a phone call. I'd be glad to hear from you. I hope you found this thought-provoking. I hope you're more aware about the universal dynamic we all experience from time to time. Um, rejections. Uh, I appreciate your attention. Thanks for watching.